I'll, I'll share this one experience when Richard was in the Army. Why, it was after I was there in July 54. So I think it was probably in the fall of, of, uh, of 1954. And he was called in to go on this special mission. And he was going down into the Black Forest. And uh, he really didn't know what he was going to be doing. He got down there and he says he knew when he was met at the gate with guards that had real live ammunition that there was something really going on, but he didn't know what. He, was, he went into the army as a, a special electrical device op, uh, operator. And, and so they sent him down to the Black Forest in October got in there and there were these huge, huge generators. They were probably as big as half the size of this room. They were just huge. And they, had, they were brand new generators and they weren't able to get them started. And that was what they had called he and his company to go down and see what they could do. Now, Richard was 23 years old and so he was, he, he was really at a loss of what, of how he was going to get these going. And he asked for the directions, which was logical. And they weren't going to give them to him because it was top secret. <laughs> Finally, they condescended to do it and they gave him the manual. And he took the manual over to the a log and sat down and started to pray. And the answer came to him, and he went back to the the generators and and did what told him that was told to him to do, and he got him started. And it turns out that these generators had to do with the missile program, which was top secret. But when he when he got back to Switzerland, he was called in by his commanding officer, and they promoted him to staff sergeant, which was unheard of, of a, 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 a enlisted man, not enlisted man, a draftee. And the regular armies were, uh, sergeants were very jealous of him. They, they were very upset at it to think that a draftee would get this promotion as opposed to someone who had, had been enlisted and was in for professional. So he came home as, he went in as a private, came home as a staff sergeant in two years, which was a, a, a blessing in many respects. But, so that was, a, that was one thing that happened on, uh, when he was in the service that was, that, where it t taught us that, important to listen to the spirit and he was blessed from doing so so Do you have any and experiences when he was on his mission that you might want to share uh, when he he had served in the uh, German mission before uh, he was drafted and that was one of the reasons they sent him back to Germany is that he knew the language and uh, he was just one of a few from, from his platoon that went to Germany instead of going over to Korea. And, uh, uh, but um, I'm trying to think, oh, he was called at the time we were in uh, Germany to uh, be uh, a counselor to uh, a colonel. <laughs> that was an interesting experience. Uh, Colonel Nielsen was the was the branch president of the Heidelberg branch, and he was called as uh, one of the counselors. And then there was another uh, professional that was called to be the second counselor. I can't think of their name, Eper, eh, 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 Epic or something like that. And uh, Colonel Nielsen, uh, uh, we had the experience of of going to, to Bremerhaven and picking up uh, Colonel Nielsen's car and driving it back through Holland and into Germany. And when, when we got to the German border, there was something 
a, a, my passport wasn't quite right for some reason, and they weren't going to let me back into Germany. They were going to let everyone else in, but I wasn't in uniform, and, and they weren't going to let me in. And when uh, when Colonel Nilsson said the word that, to these German officers, he says she is going in. <laughs> There was no question because of his rank. He pulled his rank on him to get me back into Germany. Otherwise, I would have been <laughs> left a 19-year-old girl in France not being able to get into Germany.